So how about that? Instead of going from left to right, let's try to go from right to left and see if we're going to get another idea. Because this way the thought process is not from how many different steps am I going to go to the top, rather you're going to split the problem into various sub-problems and you're going to ask from this part how much do I need to go to the top, then from this how much I need to go from here because this person knows the way to the top. Greetings everyone, today we're talking about problem 70, climbing stairs. This problem was given by Google in a coding interview and today we're going to be coding it in JavaScript. Now, this problem is around 7 lines of code, so in terms of lines of code, it's actually fairly easy. But the idea, until you actually get to coding it, is going to be a bit more difficult, so don't get discouraged and let's read the problem together. You are climbing a staircase and it takes n steps to reach to the top. Each time you can either climb one or two steps. And in how many distinct ways can you climb to the top? Now, when you think about that, I want you to think about the subway because, you know, there's stairs there and some people just take one step at a time, usually the girls and the men usually take two steps at a time because we have, you know, longer feet. That's at least what I do. So think about this when we're going through the problem. Now, I'm going to go with examples and I'm going to make a solution for them. Actually, let's go down and we see both of them. And I'm going to do both. Now we're going to be asked in how many distinct ways can we climb to the top if we have two stairs. Now, assuming that we're going to be starting from zero, right? I am going to have two distinct ways. The first one is I'm going to go to one, performing one step since I can either do one or two, and then one again, and I'll be ending up at the top. Keep in mind that from one, we cannot use two steps here because we're going to end somewhere in the no space, which is not allowed. Now, so obviously when we have two stairs, we're going to be having two distinct ways to climb on them. So how about three? If I have three, two, one, zero, and assuming that we're starting from zero, I can say one step at a time until I get to the top. This, by the way, is always going to be valid. If I have 50 stairs, I also can take one step at a time until I get to the 50th. Now, what else I can do is I can say one step to number one, and then I can take two steps now, I'm going to end in the top three. That's good. That is allowed. That's the second distinct way. And the third distinct way is me performing two steps to begin with, ending up at position two. And then I had to use different colors, performing one step, bringing me to the top, which is allowed. Now, with this, you have the following knowledge. I'm going to say stairs here because I'm going to be formulating a theory. And that is something that you should always aim to do, formulate your own theory if you do not understand the problem. Now, I do understand the problem. I do not understand how am I actually going to go through this problem. I don't know what I want. I don't know if I need to be building a hash map. I don't know anything. So now I'm just going to say, all right, what is my theory? I'm just going to formulate something. Now, these are stairs and these are distinct ways that I can climb. We know that we know, we know from the example here that I, when I have two stairs, am having two distinct ways to climb to the top. If, however, I have three stairs, I am having, as you can see here, three distinct ways to go to the top. So, so far, my theory is, right, nothing, obviously, <laughs> because I don't have enough data, but I can assume that if I have four stairs, I'm going to have probably four distinct ways. I'm not entirely sure. I need to check that right? But for now, I'm just going to say that I'm having four. Now, this is a theory. This is my theory. I'm not entirely sure if this is going to be the case, but it seems like it from that. So I'm going to write four staircases here. Four, three, two, one, and zero. And now, one thing that I can do, since four is not too big of a number, I can actually test how many unique ways I have. And if I perform this, because this is totally valid again, you can go and check it, right? I'm going to show you actually how I would do it if I had no complete knowledge about anything. I would just perform this. It's called brute force because I have no idea how to start. And that's what I did in the beginning. So obviously I can go, my first way is going to be, and let's actually go with, yeah, black. I'm going to go one step at a time until I go to the top. And boom, this is going to be 
a distinct way. Then I'm actually going to change my color and I'm going to be having green. Green is going to be my second way. Right? The second way is me performing two steps at a time. So once, twice, and obviously this is a valid way. Good. Then I'm going to go with red. Again, I'm going with different colors just so we can see them better. Because it's going to be a lot and I don't want every, all the colors to be black. You're not going to be able to see them. The third way is me going one step at a time here. Then two steps. And then one step bringing me to the top. So obviously this is a valid way. Now I'm going to go with number four. And number four is going to be blue. Number four is going to be pretty much the same thing. I am going to start two at the first, right? Ending at the second step. And then I'm going to go one step, one step, bringing me to four. This is a valid way. Now, my theory is that I had four unique distinct ways. Can you spot a fifth unique way? How can I go in a fifth distinct way? Now, I've went from one, I went with the twos, I went one, two, and one, I went two, one, one, and obviously, I can go one more way. Now, I'm going to go with, I don't know, brown, or whatever this color is. Yeah, brown. Mm -hmm. And I sew this way, so I'm going to go the following. Now, I can say, I don't know, know where to write it, but I can go like this. One is going to bring me to number one. Again, one is going to bring me to number two. And from number two, I'm going to take two and bring myself to number four. Now, I think this is the, the fifth unique way. I'm not entirely sure, but from what I see, I didn't did it. I didn't do it, right? So this is going to be a unique way, meaning that I have five unique ways. So obviously this here is not going to be four, it's going to be five. And here you can actually spot the theory. Five is equal from this plus this. And then you can actually code it up. Now this, however, was very difficult and very cumbersome, and that's called brute force. It's very difficult. So how about we actually go from left to right, Instead of left to right, we go from right to left. Now, I'm going to show you what I mean. So instead of me trying to find all of the unique ways that I can end up being at the top, how about I'm going to start from the top and I'm going to go from the bottom to the bottom. Now, this is going to be working as follows. I am going to ask myself, being here, me standing here, the person that I am, how many steps do I need to take in order to be at the top? Now, obviously, here... I can either go with zero or one because I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to say one for the purpose of the video. Now, let's say that my character is not here. It's at number three. So my character is actually at number three. Now, this one is very easy. I have only one distinct way to go to the top, right? And that is to move one step at the right. Here, by the way, one because you can just stay, not move. So obviously, it's going to be more mathematically correct to say that I have zero ways to go to the top because I'm already on the top. Now, here on three, I have one way, right? I have exactly one way to go to the top and that's climbing once. And I'm going to store this. It's called memorization. You're storing runtime what you found. Now, what's interesting is that if I go to the left now, so I'm standing at number two, right? I can ask myself, how many distinct ways do I have, if my person is here, to go to the top? Now, think about this. I have two distinct ways. I can go with like that, so two steps, or I can just go to three, because three already knows, already knows in how many distinct ways I can go from three to four. So it's very nice because three now knows, right? So he knows ways to the top. So I can either go to three and ask him, hey, buddy, how do I get to the top? Or I can just get to the top myself. So I'm having two, right? And I'm gonna write it down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have two distinct ways from two. Now, if my persona, however, is ending up at the first, right? I can go to two because two now knows how to go to the top. Two knows how to go to the three, which in turn knows how to go to the top, or two just can skip three and go to the top on its own. So I have two ways here at the two. 
I have either go to the two, I have either go to the three, or go to the four on your own. So I have exactly three ways, distinct ways, that I'm going to get myself to the top from stair number one. In reality, you can see that these two are making this number over here. And if I go from zero, of course, I'm going to have certain analogy there, five distinct ways, because these you're going to sum them up and you're going to add them at five. So that's pretty much the problem. Now this is the whole idea, so let's actually see it in code. I'm gonna create a data index, right? This is going to be where I'm gonna be storing the indexes and this is how I'm going to perform the memorization. I'm going to be storing what I find runtime. This is about, uh, let me go again real quick. This is about the tree that knows how to go to the top. Tree knows that he needs to perform necessary steps in order to go to the top. You don't care how you're gonna go to the top, you just care that you're going to go to three because three is going to get you there. In order for us to create this array, I'm just going to say let data. Also, I'm going to say data of zero is gonna be equal to one and data of one is gonna be equal to one. This is very simple to understand because obviously I am going to start, right? If I ask myself how many distinct ways do I have to go to number one, Obviously, I cannot perform two steps because I'm going to get further away. I can only perform one step, and that is why we're saying one here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say four, let index equal two. I'm letting index to be equal two because one and zero are already there, so you don't need to worry about them. Index is less or equal than n. This is the number that we got here, and index plus plus. So again, what we're going to do since our theory was formulated, now I'm going to write it down and you're going to see it perfectly. Stairs and distinct ways. If I want to go to stair number zero, obviously I cannot perform two steps. Obviously I cannot perform even one step. I am just going to be there. And zero is not even allowed. You can see it actually down here. So I'm just going to say one. If I want to go to stair number one, I have one or two steps to perform. I cannot perform steps two because I am going to get somewhere here which is not going to be valid. I can only do it once going one step. So distinct ways going to be one. Stairs number two, I already know from the example two. Stair number three, already know from the example three. Stair number four, I already know from my brute force that it's five. And do you see it now? This is going to bring me two. This thing here is going to bring me three. This thing here is going to bring me five. There we go. That's pretty much it. And in order to do this in code, I am going to say data of index is going to be is going to be equal of data of the previous one plus the previous previous. Oops, minus two. And at finally, what I need to return is I need to return data of n, right? Because I'm searching how many distinct ways do I have to stare number five. If I say index is less here than n, I'm obviously not going to find five, I'm going to find four. That's why I'm saying equal here and I'm just going to return it. So let's submit and see if it's going to work out. There we go. So that's pretty much the problem. Now, the only thing that's left to be talking about is space and time complexity. And I'm going to go through these rather quickly because they're easy. Space, I am allocating a new array over here. So this is obviously going to be linear because if I have 1 million elements here, I'm going to be creating an array with holding 1 million elements over here, right? So that's going to be linear space. Time complexity, very easy. Linear again, because I'm going once here with this for loop. And if I have 1 million elements, I'm just going to go 1 million times after each element. And that's what's bringing me to a linear time. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Bye.